the Best Docs Network helps you find some of the best doctors utilizing the latest procedures and practices in healthcare. Actual patients and the doctors themselves walk you through their stories that together help you make the best decision in your search for the right doctor. On today's episode, Interventional cardiologist Dr. Annie Varghese talks about hypertension. Cosmetic dentist Dr. Guy Lewis helps a wounded warrior improve his smile. Neurosurgeon Dr. Jeffrey Caterini discusses treatment options for hemangiomablastoma. Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Charles Tolson discusses the benefit of a double hip replacement. I had gone from such an active lifestyle to a life of where sitting, standing, sleeping, trying to turn, trying to walk. Getting up off the sofa was a major ordeal for me. Any kind of movement or non-movement was excruciating. Brenda is in her 60s. She came to me because she had severe arthritis in both of her hips. Uh, she had seen other doctors. Uh, one doctor prescribed injections, but they only lasted a few days. So we found that she was indicated for bilateral hip replacement because she had severe arthritis in both hips. After an examination, he goes, I have good news and I have bad news. And he says, well, the bad news is both of your hips are in really bad shape. He says, you're gonna have to have the, the bilateral hip replacement. The good news is, um, I can do it and I'm happy to do it. Dr. Tolson also had a model of the hip and he said this is this is what the procedure is going to look like and he talked through the whole thing and he says you're going to be a new person once you have these hips in. It takes about six to eight weeks for a patient to recover from hip replacement but when you do both at the same time it literally takes about the same amount of time for them to recover. Uh, this in particular makes bilateral hip replacement and ideal surgery when you have the perfect candidate. Because Brenda was very healthy, we were able to accomplish both hip replacements in one setting. After surgery, I woke up and I cannot begin to tell you how wonderful it was. I was without the, the pain that I'd had over two years. Uh, Brenda is doing amazingly well. She is just so happy and, and happy with life. She walks three to four miles a day. Uh, she has no pain. She's able to, to do everything she wants to do in her life, and we're extremely happy with her outcome. I just cannot thank Dr. Tolson enough for giving me back my life. It, it, it's truly a gift, and I will be forever grateful. Get at least seven hours of sleep a night. It will help you live longer, lower your stress, sharpen your memory, and reduce cravings for fattening foods. I found out about James through a um, local chiropractor who uh, has treated a lot of wounded warriors and has worked with them and donated his time to help those guys. On February 26, 2006, we were on a, um, a presence patrol and we got some information that they were making um, IEDs in a mosque, which is a place that is uh, the majority of the time a place where we can't go mosque in schools. Uh, but anyway, we went there, we followed the information, um, detained some personnel, and as we were leaving, there was an SV bid on site that detonated right next to my striker. A uh, piece of shrapnel entered through my helmet over my left ear and gave me a skull fracture, a windshield skull fracture. He was at Walter Reed for a long time, coma, trauma, and he's made a remarkable recovery. He's self-conscious about his teeth, and it's not that they were broken up or damaged in the accident that he had, but he's studying to be a nurse practitioner, and so he's seeing people in the clinic, and so then 
He's going in and talking to patients and people. I have a very stern and aggressive approach and it's just ingrained in me after you know, 10 years of being a ranger, that's just how you communicate. I'm learning to smile and then I realized, you know, growing up I was embarrassed about my smile and when I see my patients and I don't smile, they just, it's hard for them to, this guy is too serious for me to be treating me, he's mean. He just had a, you know, a self-consciousness about his teeth and yes, they definitely could use veneers. Um, he has some teeth that are real crooked and tucked in and stuff, so he's a perfect candidate. The whole team here, they've taken me in and I'm just, I'm excited about the change because I know the, um, my demeanor is going to change as I work with my patients. You know, I have so much respect for these guys who go and put it on the line for our country. And uh, my dad was wounded in the South Pacific in World War II. And I'm just a big supporter of our veterans and what they do. So I wanted to help this guy. I just wanted to, you know, and uh, I think he's going to get a fantastic result. Best Stocks Network doctor and official eye doctor to the Dallas Cowboys, Dr. Harvey Carter, the expert for all your vision needs. See the world differently in only a day. Specializing in LASIK, cataracts, and crystal lens. Visit Dr. Carter today for the ultimate eye experience. Call now and receive 2,000 off your LASIK procedure. When seeing is believing. Dr. Harvey Carter, the official eye doctor to the Dallas Cowboys. In my 20s and early 30s, I had six years of fertility treatments before I was able to conceive, followed by uterine cancer when my son was 18 months old. Both of those caused me to gain a great deal of weight, and I put it off and put it off and put it off, not thinking that insurance would ever cover the surgery. And then I went to see Dr. Frenzel, found out that it would be covered by insurance, had the surgery, have lost all of the weight, and I'm going on three years post-op now, and it has been wonderful. We got Stacy approved. Let us do the same for you. Call now and begin your transformation. When I first noticed I had some things off going on, uh, I was experiencing a little bit of uh, off balance and coordination wasn't the same. And uh, I know my ability and so I just knew something was off. Adam and I are young, we're in our late 20s. We're both very active. Um, Adam coaches select soccer. I'm a club volleyball coach and also coach for high school. And we have a young daughter, Adley, who's two and a half. She's our first, and we've got one on the way due in May. So we have a lot going on, no time for a brain tumor really to come into our lives. You know, I asked Dr. Caterine, you know, tell me something to make me feel more comfortable. And he said, uh, you know how you coach soccer? I do this. The tumor is benign. The tumor is quite large in terms of the cystic and solid component together measured about seven centimeters. A seven centimeter brain tumor uh, grows, can grow very slowly, and so people's symptoms may be very minor and present then very suddenly. Being young, you don't think anything like that's going to happen to you. So you're a little naive and think that you can conquer the world and you're invincible. The treatment options for Adam were basically one which is surgical. The focus on Adam's surgery was to remove the tumor completely so that there was no recurrence and reconstructing the back of his skull because he wanted to go back to playing soccer as well as coaching soccer. It was great to get back out to the soccer field, practice sessions and games to see, you know, my players. Thanks to Dr. Caterini, we have our lives back, we have our family back, I have my husband back and confident in his capabilities of just living life, doing his job, coaching, being active, being a part of our family. In essence, he gave us our normal life back.
How do you know the difference between having a bad cold and having allergies? It's important to know because sometimes that depends on whether you go to the doctor or not or whether you stay home or not from work or school. Well, uh, a bad cold is caused by a virus, so you generally have fever, you generally feel bad, you feel achy. The reason you feel achy is the viruses live in the tiny capillaries in your muscles. So in those capillaries, they swell up because the virus is there and then you hurt. Also, you generally uh, get chills and uh, have generally been exposed to someone who's had similar symptoms. Allergies, you generally tend to sneeze, you don't have achiness, you don't have fever, you don't have chills, uh, you may have itchy eyes and runny nose. Also, when you have a bad cold, your mucus, the stuff that comes out of your nose or your lungs, might be discolored, thick, yellow, green, whereas it's going to be thin, clear, and watery when you have allergies. Now, there's different ways to treat these things, especially if there's a bacteria involved, you might need antibiotics. So basically, just remember, it's fever, chills, and just feeling horrible all over. That usually means a bad cold with a virus in or a bacteria, and you need to see your doctor. Otherwise, it's probably just allergies. Just get some stuff over the counter. I noticed something wrong in July of 2008. I actually went to a routine uh, doctor's visit for some breakout that I had because um, I had used a different type of deodorant and when they took my blood pressure they said that it was you know unusually high. Hypertension, what can it cause? And some people think well the blood pressure is a little bit high they can take a medicine or maybe they just don't have to take it every day. A lot of people take this uh, idea of hypertension kind of casually but we shouldn't because high blood pressure can cause problems from stroke to heart attack to a kidney failure. So many things can be caused by that one word, hypertension. Ended up inevitably going to the emergency room like a couple of days after because my I just started feeling really dizzy, headache. It was as if my heart was actually hurting inside of my body. The blood pressure was 200 over 110. When I came to see her, her first words were, we're gonna heal you. And I was like, yes, came to the right place. And she has been committed and faithful to take her medicines and to take care of her body to protect her heart. Because high blood pressure can lead to many other things, especially cardiomyopathies or weakening of the heart, heart failure from diastolic heart failure or systolic heart failure. So we have prevented that in her and she's doing very well. Before, I would feel sluggish, tired, anxious a lot, and a little headaches like that. And then after, you know, once we started treatment on medicine, different medicines, you know, I would feel better. I would feel like I had energy. I just felt better and good about myself. If the pressure is too high, too, too much damage can occur in the organs. We have to take it seriously. And, and we just need to educate patients, I believe. If patients really knew what it was all about, they would come and get checked and take their medicine. I believe that Dr. Varghis has been blessed from the Lord with um, life and favor, you know, in her hands. So, and I just love that about her. Do you have missing teeth, need crowns, veneers, partials? dentures, or a full mouth reconstruction? Prostodontist Dr. David McFadden will give you back the youthful appearance and confidence you deserve. Backed by credibility and credentials, Dr. McFadden is cosmetically changing his patients' lives one smile at a time. Call today or log on to DignityDental.com. Dr. David McFadden, your go-to dentist in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. As we see it, Advances in medicine have as much to do with patient comfort as with medical technology. Oh, at Forest Park Medical Center, we invest in medical technology as much as any hospital in North Texas. It's just that we invest in other things as well. You see, Forest Park Medical Center was designed for warmth, designed for comfort, designed for, dare we say it, our patients. Come see for yourself what medical care should be. Forest Park Medical Center, your destination to better health. Coming up on the second half of today's show, podiatrist Dr. Gabriel Meislos treats his patients' bunions. 
facial plastic surgeon, Dr. Yadro Ducic, discusses his philosophy on practicing medicine. Craniofacial and plastic surgeon, Dr. David Jenikov, discusses a special technique he uses for treating patients. Plastic surgeon, Dr. David Altamira, gives his patient the looks she's always wanted. Hello everyone, we're in the studio today with one of the top facial plastic surgeons in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. It's Dr. Yadro Ducic. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. So you're double board certified. Tell me a little bit about what other areas you specialize in. Uh, well, I do a, a fair amount of uh, reconstructive surgery as well. So we deal with a lot of uh, uh, facial trauma patients, head and neck cancer patients, skin cancer patients. Uh, and it's a lot of those folks here, you're removing parts of their face and, and then reconstructing and rebuilding them. Um, and it really kind of um, flows nicely into cosmetic surgery because it's a, you're doing similar sort of things. It's all about making people uh, feel better about their appearance and function better. So tell me, Dr. Duchik, you have a unique philosophy and tell me what your goal is with, with patients. Well, well, I hope it's not too unique. I'd hope that most facial plastic and plastic surgeons felt the same way, but you know, by the time a patient comes to see you, for whatever the problem is, whether it's a crooked nose, a mole on their chin, uh, a weak chin, a loosening of skin, um, whatever the issue is, they've thought about it for a long time. Um, they've looked in the mirror, they've critiqued themselves, um, sometimes they've even shed a few tears. And so the last thing we need to do is, is to make them feel more uncomfortable about other things. And so I think it's important to address what their concerns are, um, recommend procedures or surgeries if they're appropriate, um, and reassure them that they'll do fine even if they don't have anything done. Um, because the most important thing you want is for them to walk out of the office feeling good about themselves. And the most important thing we want after surgery or procedures is for our patients to feel good about themselves. The last thing we want is to create more anxiety um, by pointing out other flaws, which all of us have. That's what makes us human. To see the rest of this interview, as well as other outstanding videos, head to BestDocsNetwork.com. and on-the-go technology are on the rise, causing Americans to use headphones more than ever. But did you know that wearing headphones for just an hour could increase the bacteria in your ear by 700 times? A bunion deformity is a deviation of the first metatarsal and the second metatarsal. So basically, you know, what people see of their big toe is this. So the big toe is pointing this way, and this bone is going out this way. When it's not matching up well, you get bone growth. And so bone starts to build up right here, and it also starts to build up top. I spend about 85% of my time traveling, so I'm in and out of the airports. Um, as a training manager, I do a lot of facilitation. So I'm on my feet a lot walking, and it got to the point where even flat shoes, what most people would think is comfortable shoes, um, became, became painful. Her surgery was an Austin bunionectomy, but it was a little bit different because uh, on the x-ray I discovered that she has severely arthritic joint. She had fracture fragments, so these fracture fragments never heal, and because they were constantly moving, it was severe pain. It caused an enormous amount of uh, bone growth on the top and on the side. So I was really excited to do her surgery because I knew it would provide immediate relief. I'll be wearing the boot for at least another four weeks and then I'll come back for another reassessment. Um, and then he'll determine then whether I can take the boot off and then just start walking in normal shoes. People always ask, you know, why do I have this problem? And uh, the biggest component is genetics. So if you look at your parents' feet or your grandparents' feet, it's basically telling you if you see a bunion deformity that, that your chances are your feet are going to develop these structural deformities. But then obviously for the females it's wearing the high heels you know it's uh, there's a price to pay for high fashion you wear the high heel 
Uh, it puts your foot in position, which makes predisposes you for, to a bunion deformity. Well, I would love to be able to get back out there and be pain free. A lot of times I couldn't wait for the day to end because I would be in so much pain. So I'm looking forward to being able to be on my feet for longer period of times pain free. The look on the patient's face when they come in and they see the results and they're happy with the results and they see that instead of having a crooked toe or that it's actually straight and that the pain that they had before is gone. So, you know, that's the rewarding part to me. started with this desire to kind of house or hold all this reconstructed material for, for our patients. So we only had to do the surgery once. Because you can take stem cells from fat and you can treat that fat and separate those cells out, we then are able to do that and also save those cells for future use. I was 13 when I was diagnosed with Perry Romberg syndrome and ever since then I've had little surgeries here and there. Angela has Perry Romberg syndrome and that is called hemifacial atrophy. It usually starts in early adolescence and then slowly over time the tissue tends to just wither away. My first three treatments with Dr. Jenico were mainly just building it up, starting from scratch, putting tissue into my face and then he built on from there with adding the silicone bone to my chin, adding the donor bone to the side of my face rebuilding my eye socket, my nose. If we know we're gonna operate more than once, we don't wanna go back in and have to harvest all that fat every time. So now we have the ability not only to remove the fat and store that fat, but we can also take the enrichment, the stem cells and regenerative cells that exist within that fat, separate them, and then add them back to another aliquot of fat prior to the uh, reintroduction of the grafting process. He's put tissue and everything to kind of regrowth and it just makes it so that my appearance is that I'm normal on both sides. We use different kinds of things like bone grafts or we sometimes need to cut the bone and move the bone, especially the lower jaw to, for the chin. But oftentimes we need to use fat or other tissue substitutes to build it back up. And that's why we developed this. Now it has application outside in orthopedics and cosmetic surgery and ultimately cardiac surgery and just general therapeutic issues. But it was started out for patients like Angela who have severe facial asymmetries who need repetitive operations. We can take that fat, store it, and then process it in such a way that we can better enhance their reconstruction later on, then everybody's a winner. Carla has a question for Dr. Peter Morgan. What are the causes of venous insufficiency? The risk factors or causes of venous insufficiency are, um, first of all, genetic or hereditary. Patients that have uh, parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles that have large varicose veins are more likely to have disease that is caused by a genetic predisposition for the veins to get larger. The second risk factor is lifestyle issues, including jobs, occupations, or hobbies that result in standing or sitting for long periods of time. Do you have missing teeth, need crowns, veneers, partials, dentures, or a full mouth reconstruction? Prostodontist Dr. David McFadden will give you back the youthful appearance and confidence you deserve. Backed by credibility and credentials, Dr. McFadden is cosmetically changing his patients' lives one smile at a time. Call today or log on to DignityDental.com. Dr. David McFadden, your go-to dentist in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I didn't feel good about myself and I never wanted to go anywhere. Now my world has opened up. I occasionally go out with my girlfriends and we have a great time together. I was getting older and didn't really care about my weight, but my doctor said I needed to do something immediately. Now I'm spending time with my grandchildren and every moment seems special. My one reason was to live life again. My one reason was to simply live. So what's your one reason? 
Barker Bariatric Center. Log on or call today for your consultation. Best Stocks Network doctor and official eye doctor to the Dallas Cowboys, Dr. Harvey Carter, the expert for all your vision needs. See the world differently in only a day. Specializing in LASIK, cataracts, and crystal lens. Visit Dr. Carter today for the ultimate eye experience. Call now and receive $2,000 off your LASIK procedure. When seeing is believing. Dr. Harvey Carter, the official eye doctor to the Dallas Cowboys. You notice something about Forest Park Medical Center the moment you walk through the front door. Gone are the smells, the sights, and the sounds that are typically associated with most hospitals. And in their place is something decidedly different. You see, Forest Park Medical Center was designed to be comfortable, inviting, even calling. Fact is, many of our patients don't want to leave. Come experience for yourself what medical care should be. Forest Park Medical Center, your destination to better health. Eating potassium-packed picks such as bananas, cantaloupe, and oranges may help you to be less prone to high blood pressure. In addition, reducing sodium intake and taking other heart-healthy steps will also help to manage your blood pressure. I had kind of a bump up here on the bridge and the end kind of hung down a little bit. It just, it was a little bit big. And um, I think a couple times in my life guys had made comments like, oh, our kids would have really big noses. Well, Holly came in with, with the, the, just the thought that had bothered her for a long time, that her nose just didn't match her face. She's an otherwise very attractive young lady, but she'd always had just a, a large nose that was out of proportion to the rest of her face. I mean, overall, Dr. Altamira made the experience so easy and simple, and I think um, out of all the doctors that I spoke with, uh, he was the one who made me the most at ease with the process, and he said, you, know, you can always do more, but let's, let's do something modest for now. Um, and it's just overall really comfortable. First we talk to the patient at length. We, we ask them what they like about their nose and then what they don't like about their nose. There are certain things that you know, we can change and certain things we don't want to change if, if, they, if they're happy with that. We'll take several photographs from different angles and then we can project them on the, on the computer screen for the patient and we can actually morph the images to, to show the patient what, what they can possibly look like. And that way we can make sure we're on the same page as far as what the patient wants to look like and what, what can actually be accomplished in surgery so that they do have realistic expectations and we can kind of give them a good idea of what they will actually will look like after the surgery. The recovery time was really quick. Dr. Altamira had explained that it would hurt for um, a little bit, he even gave me painkillers, but I think I took two of them. It wasn't as painful nearly as I thought it would be. Um, and. I think I had some soreness if I would touch it for maybe a month after, but overall it didn't hurt. Rhinoplasty is basically changing the shape of the nose. It can be done for a variety of reasons. Usually a lot of times just the patient has always felt their nose was too big for their face. They were never happy with their appearance. And so it's basically a great operation that can be used to reshape the person's nose to, uh, to match their face better. It was so exciting taking that band-aid off for the first time. Like, so when you look in, at yourself in the mirror, you always notice an imperfection that maybe you don't like. And for the first time I looked and thought, oh, my nose is adorable. <laughs> didn't find the doctor you're looking for on today's episode, head to our website, bestdocsnetwork.com. There you can search our video library by topic, specialty, and doctor. The Best Docs Network, helping you find the right doctor and bringing medical education to you.